Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Geometry Notes in 3.0. Today, we will be making this dynamic and completely procedural fish animation effect that will run until the end of time. So, without further ado, let's get started. Also, if you want this uh, entire file with the nice fish model right here and the nice caustics, it is up on my Gumroad account. Link in the description and comments. So, to start out, let's clear the scene and only have our nice little fish model, nice little fish guy, here in the scene. So, with the geometry nodes effect, all we need is one set position node right here. And this will be the basis for the entire effect. So, we need to displace this procedurally using a random number over time. So, to do that, let's use a noise texture. You've probably seen me do this before in other tutorials. Set this to 1D. Uh, scale set to 1 and detail set to 0. If we were to put the color into the offset right here, we can see that it now moves over time, which is what we want. But we need it to, we need the effect to be bigger. So to do that, let's use a vector math scale node and set the scale to something around 10. There we go. And as we can see, the fish is moving a lot more, but it's offset uh, over in this corner. To fix that, let's use a subtract node set to 0.5. So if we put this right here, we could see that the fish is moving around the center point, which is exactly what we want. So let's put this over to here, minimize it, and add in a frame to keep everything very nice and organized right here. Now that we have the basis set up, let's use a value node so that we could input the scene time and have it move per frame so that we don't have to manually animate it. To do that in 3.0, we use hashtag frame to get the frame number. In the future, there will be a scene, a scene time input node, but for now we have to use this driver method. Remember, hashtag frame. So to do this, let's use a math node set to divide so that we could set the speed. And let's set the divide to 24 and plug this into the W. As we could see, this is moving quite nicely, maybe a bit too fast. So let's set that to 50. There we go. Now this fish will run forever in a completely different pattern over time. I've had some people ask me if I were if I could loop this, which the answer is technically yes, but would require copying the entire effect, adding a little bit of math, and it's just a big hassle, so I won't be teaching you that today. So now what we want to do is make it so that it looks like the fish is moving through water. So to do that, we need to delay like the fins a little bit over time so that the head moves first and the fins move last. To do this, we need to use the position node and we need to get the distance from the center, the origin point right here, when the fish is in the center before it moves. So to do that, let's use a distance node just like that. And now we get the distance from the center. So it will be here will be a value of almost zero and toward the end will be a value of one or whatever distance this is. Okay, so what we need to do next is add this to the main effect, set this to multiply and put this into here. Actually, let's set this to divide, set this to around 20. As we can see, it's working. Let's set the divide node to negative 50 so that the head moves first and the fins move last. Okay, there we go. Let's add in another frame just to keep everything nice and organized right here. And actually, let's add in another frame for this entire part so that we can move it over very easily. So now that we have the effect working relatively, we need to affect the rotation so that the fish is facing the way it is moving. So to do that, we need to add in a little bit more math. We need to copy this section right here, the noise texture, and add in a math node beforehand so that we can offset the time. What this does is, is give us the future position of the fish so that we could point it in that direction. It's a little bit math heavy, I know, but just stick with me and it will work. So to do this, let's subtract both of these values to get just the rotation data right here and add in a vector, or no, utilities, align Euler to vector node and put this into here. And now we have the rotation data, perfect. To apply this rotation data to the object, let's use the position input in a vector rotate node, vector rotate, plug in the vector rotate to the top node, set this to Euler, and set the align Euler to vector into the rotation. Now that we have that, we just plug this into the position input, 
and now the fish is moving semi-correctly. It looks a little bit wonky, but we will fix that in a second. First of all, uh, let's make sure that the scale is set into the is put into the offset, and the uh, vector rotate is put into the position. The position happens first, and the offset happens second. So if we were to do this, we could see that the fish is just rotating correctly or semi-correctly. We'll fix that in a second, and then it is moved to the right position. Perfect. So to fix the rotation problem, as we have here, that moves a little bit wonky and turns upside down. All we need to do is set the pivot to Z. So now it is rotating on the Z axis in the right way. And now if we hook this up into here and this into here, another node like this, and then we set this to the Y axis, we can see that it is moving correctly. It's no longer twisting upside down and all that weird stuff. If you find that the rotation is happening too fast, then just offset this add node by a little bit more. I found that 0.3 works pretty good. In the original file yeah that seems pretty good let's set the divide to 10 so that we get a little more of the fish moving in the nice pattern maybe turn up the scale to like 15. there we go that's working pretty good let's set the divide to 20 again okay and now we are almost at the end of the effect we just need to make it so that the fish kind of wobbles or like waves as it's moving to make it look like it's propelling itself rather than everything else. Let's set the time to 100, just to make it look a little nicer. There we go, that looks, or negative 75. That seems pretty good. And you could apply this effect to like a dragon or something like that, but I find that the fish looks the best. Okay, now for this, to get the wavy effect, we need to use the time node and put it into a sine wave, or a sine math node. So let's put this right here. Make sure to add reroutes. Just make sure everything is nice and organized. There we go. That right there and this right over here. So with this, with the sine node, it will give us a wave function that we can apply to the effect by using a utilities rotate Euler node. So let's move the rotate over to here. If we plug this into the rotation right here, we could rotate this on the z-axis, just like that. See, it's moving, quite nice. So let's set the axis angle to z, as it already is, and set it from object to local. So that means no matter what orientation it is, it'll rotate in the right direction, local to what it already is. Okay, now what we can do is add in the sine to the angle. As we could see, uh, it's rotating just a little bit over time. To fix that, let's set a multiply node and set it up more and more and more. And as we can see, it is doing it, but not quite right. We need to customize it a little bit. Let's set the value node, the multiply to 0.5. This will affect how intense the effect is. So if we were to turn this up a lot, we could see that it's moving quite a bit, quite comically uh, incorrect. Let's add in another frame, keep things organized. Always keep your nodes organized, everyone. Okay, and as we could see, let, let's set the multiply to around 50 and set the other multiply for the influence down to something like that, or point, point 0.1. There we go, that seems pretty good. Let's see, let, let's hone in the values a little bit, just like that and like that. There we go, now it looks like the fish is actually moving. There we go. Okay, maybe we could set the detail to 1, and maybe that'll look a little bit better, more organic. Nah, let's set it back to 0. And there we go. We have the fish animation working quite well. It, it still looks a little bit odd from my perspective. I don't know if that's just me. Oh yeah, that's looking a bit better. But if you want, if you think that the, the pattern is not looking good, all you need to do is add in another add node. Set it to like 500 or something like that, and then you'll get a completely new pattern for your timeline. So as we can see here, the fish is moving very nicely, and you could add in like a fishbowl around this and all that good stuff. That'll be working quite well. Okay, I think that's the entire effect. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out my Gumroad account. Again, these, uh, the fish file is on there. And uh, make sure you check out my Twitter account, like, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I think I already said that. And yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.